One of the most common parts to fail on a single phase HVAC system is the run capacitor. So much so that we sometimes refer to junior techs as capacitor changers. It's not very nice, but it's something we do. While capacitors may be easy to diagnose and replace, here are some things many techs may not know. Capacitors don't boost the voltage. A capacitor is a device that stores a differential charge on opposing metal plates. While capacitors can be used in circuits that boost voltage, they don't actually increase voltage themselves, so they're not voltage boosters. We often see higher voltage across the capacitor than the line voltage, but this is due to the back EMF, or counter electromotive force, generated by the motor, not the capacitor itself. Current doesn't flow through the capacitor, just in and out of it. Techs notice that one side of power is connected to the C terminal, or the side opposite the run winding. Many techs imagine this power feeds into the terminal, gets boosted or shifted, and then enters the compressor or motor through the other side. While that may make sense and is a way of thinking of it, it isn't actually how a capacitor works at all. A typical HVAC run capacitor is just two long sheets of really thin metal insulated with an insulation barrier of very thin plastic and immersed in an oil to help dissipate the heat. Just like the primary and secondary of a transformer, the two sheets of metal never actually touch at all, but electrons do gather and discharge with every cycle of the alternating current. For example, the electrons that gather on the C side of the capacitor never go through the plastic insulation barrier over to the herm or fan side. The two forces simply attract and release in and out of the capacitor and the same side they entered. The higher the capacitance, the higher the current on the start winding. On a properly wired PSC or permanent split capacitor motor, the only way the start winding can have any current move through it is if the capacitor stores and discharges. The higher the MFD or microfarad of the capacitor, the greater the stored energy and the greater the start winding amperage. If the capacitor is completely failed with zero capacitance, it is the same as having an open start winding or an open circuit altogether. Next time you find a failed run capacitor with no start capacitor, read the amperage on the start winding with a clamp to see what I mean. This is why oversizing a capacitor can quickly lead to damage to a compressor. By increasing the current on the start winding, the compressor start winding will be much more prone to early failure. The voltage rating is what the capacitor can handle, not what it will produce. Many techs think they must replace a 370 volt capacitor with another 370 volt capacitor. The voltage rating displays the not to exceed rating, which means you can replace a 370 volt with a 440 volt, but you cannot replace a 440 volt with a 370. This misconception is so common that many capacitor manufacturers began stamping 440 volt capacitors with 370 slash 440 just to eliminate confusion. You can test a capacitor while the unit is running. You simply measure the current or amperage of the motor start winding coming off of the capacitor and multiply it times 2652 on 60 hertz power and 3183 on 50 hertz power. Then you divide that number by the voltage you measure across the capacitor to come up with your microfarad value. So those are some common things that people don't know about capacitors. They're a very simple device. I think of it like a storage device for current in and out. It does result in a phase shift and it's necessary for the operation of PSC and CSCR motors. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.